Today we are going to look at uh, symmetry. And uh, under symmetry, we are going to see two different shapes. First, we are going to look at the two dimension shapes. And uh, inside two dimension shapes, we shall look at uh, a line of symmetry. Then after line of symmetry, we shall look at um, rotation of symmetry. Then when we finish the two dimension shapes, we shall go to the three dimension shapes. So also under three dimension shapes, we shall look at planes of symmetry. And after looking at planes of symmetry, then we shall see rotational symmetry of, of 3D, 3D shapes. Now let us begin with the shapes symmetry. And to be specific, we begin with the line of symmetry. Okay. So when you have a 2D, a 2D shape, 2D shape, when you have a 2D shape, uh, when we're talking about a line of symmetry, we say this is a line, a line of symmetry. This is a line that uh, can divide a shape into two equal foldable parts. Line that divide a shape into two equal foldable, two equal foldable parts. Two equal foldable parts. Now, the most important part is the part where we say foldable, because there are some shapes uh, once you fold, uh, they're not foldable. But it looks like the line is dividing. Take example, you have a square. When you have a square, and when you have a rectangle, these two will not behave exactly the same way when folded. Okay, so when you have those two lines, number one, both of them you can fold in the middle there. And even this one rectangle, you can fold in the middle here. That's possible. And when you fold, this corner here will come and join this corner here. The same two, this corner here will come and join this corner, this side. Then also, you can choose to fold them another way. We can choose to fold them another way, like this. That is possible. And also you can choose to fold this rectangle in this way. It's true. So when you fold this way, this corner here will be able to join the other corner, that side. And this one will be able to join this corner. So that is possible to fold. In the same way, this corner here will be able to join this corner, and this corner will be able to join that corner. So these are what we call the lines of symmetry. This line can divide this rectangle into two equal parts. This line can divide this rectangle into two equal parts. The same way, this line can also divide and that line can also divide. But when we have a square, when we have a square, we can still go ahead and fold through this corner here. Number three, when we fold through this corner, this will come and join this side. And hence, it will be a proper, uh, proper folding. Right? Also, we can fold it through this corner here. So that would be our fourth, our fourth line. So hence we conclude that when you have a square, a square can be folded in four different ways. And by saying so, then we will always say a square has four lines of symmetry. A square has four lines of symmetry. Now, 
a rectangle. A rectangle has only two lines of symmetry because when you try to fold through the corners like this, it is not foldable. Now let's see a little bit of the practical about it. Let's see a little bit of the practical about it. Here I'm holding a sample. This sample is representing a square. If you look properly, you'll see six squares this side, and also you'll see six squares this side. So this sample of mine here is showing us a square. So for a square, it's easy. I can fold it in the middle there. See that line in the middle here? Ah. And once I fold it, it will join properly. You see, it has joined properly. This corner has joined that corner, and that corner has joined this corner. So that's why we say this is a line of symmetry. Here, that through is our line of our line of symmetry. But again, if I fold it through this part here, if I fold it through this part here, again it will show you that see it's practically folded properly everywhere it has folded properly. So this becomes my second line of symmetry. Number one line is here, number two line is there. So those are first two lines of symmetry. Now, being a square, I can also fold through the corner diagonally. I can fold through the corner diagonally. So when you look at this, when you look at this, I have folded diagonally in the corner here. See, now it is completely, completely, see, completely folding. See this side and this side, they're all touching. So this corner is foldable. This corner is foldable. So if that corner is foldable, meaning I have one line here, second line there. Now the third line is the diagonal and the fourth one will be the other diagonal. So this is how we can prove that a square is foldable in four different manner. In four different manner. One, two, three, and four. So that is the proof for a square to fold in four different ways. Now let's check um, a rectangle. Let's check a rectangle. So this is a sample of a rectangle. This is a sample of a rectangle. If you look this side, there are six squares, but if you look this way, there are four squares. So this is a sample of a rectangle. Remember, you can fold it there in the middle. That's a rectangle, right? And it will join every corner. It will join. See? Every corner it will join. So we say this is one line of symmetry. See? One line of symmetry. You can fold there. And you can fold it in this way. This becomes our second line of symmetry. Line of symmetry, line of symmetry. So till there, we have put two lines of symmetry on a rectangle. Now, if we try to fold diagonally, let's try. If we try to fold diagonally from this diagonal to that diagonal, this is not a line of symmetry because watch, if I fold it and I turn to look, they are not joined. See, from the diagonal, this rectangle are not joined. This corner is away, this corner is away. So this becomes not foldable. This becomes not foldable. And we said for a line to be a line of symmetry, it must, it's a condition that it has to be foldable. And to be foldable means just like what we see on the square. There. Yeah. It must touch exactly. See, it's folded, and this one is folded, but this one on my right, this one here, is foldable. Means it's touching every corner. But when you look at this one here, it's not touching. This corner is going away, and this corner is going away. Meaning a rectangle can never, can never be folded through the diagonal corners. Hence, we conclude that when you have a rectangle, it has got two lines of symmetry. Two more. If you look at these two triangles here, this triangle and this triangle, this is equilateral triangle, while this one 
is it isosceles triangle. So practical tells us isosceles triangle has only one line of symmetry. See? See, it has joined the property. That's the only line of symmetry for isosceles in isosceles triangle. If I try to fold in any other way, it will never join. Look, let me check this side. See? See, it's not joining. It's, it's outside. It's outside. That's why we say um, isosceles will have only one line of symmetry. But when you look at equilateral triangle, equilateral triangle can fold from each corner. Equilateral triangle can fold from each corner. Hence, we conclude that, see, that's one way we can fold. Equilateral triangle, see, this side is joined, and the other side is also, is also joined. If I open, I can also go ahead and fold it through another corner like this, and also it will join. Okay. First, I fold it this way, it joined. Now, I'm folding this way. And if you check, it has joined. If you check, it has joined. And finally, I can fold also the remaining other corner. I can fold the remaining other corner. There. So when I check, oh, it has joined. When I check this side, it has joined. So when you have an equilateral triangle, we can fold it in three different Way. So, equilateral triangle has got three lines of symmetry. So, if I have some example of equilateral, it has got in three lines of symmetry. But when I have isosceles triangle, isosceles triangle will have only uh, one line of symmetry. Equilateral will have three lines of symmetry. We have seen that. Okay, so we have got so many shapes. Eh? We have got so many shapes, which we will see in a while. But we have one last one here. We have one last shape, which is known as a circle. We have one last one, which is known as a circle. A circle has got so many lines of symmetry if all of them are passing through the center. A circle has got so many lines of symmetry. Let me just draw quickly. See, like that. All this could be possible as long as all of them they are passing through the center. Hence, we say it's, it has infinity lines of symmetry. A circle has in infinity. This is the symbol for infinity here. This is the symbol for infinity. Infinity lines. Infinity means as many as uncountable. So a circle has got so many infinity lines. So among that, we have got so many other, other shapes. So let's look at other shapes so that we can see uh, lines of symmetry. So that we can see lines of, of symmetry. Okay. So here we go. So this is what we call mm -hmm. symmetry. There we are. Those are all uh, representing lines of symmetry. As you can see, those samples are uh, drawn on the screen. So these are some of the lines of symmetry. What is a line of symmetry? What is a line of symmetry? A line on which a line on which a figure can be folded so that both sides match. A line on which a figure can be folded so that both sides match. That's what we call a line of symmetry. To be a line of symmetry, a shape must have two halves that match exactly. When you trace a heart into a piece of folded paper and then cut it out, the two halves can show a line of symmetry. 
Which of these flags have a line of symmetry? To be specific, United States of flag, United States of America flag, there won't have a line of symmetry because of that blue part does not have a match. The blue part does not have a match. So if it doesn't have a match, then it will not it will not be foldable. If it doesn't have a match, it will not be foldable out together. Then when we go to the next shape, you can see a Canadian flag. Yes, a Canadian flag has one line of symmetry because it can divide that shape into two parts. Maryland, when you look at Maryland, when you look at Maryland, I think it does not have a line of symmetry because from the outside to like a rectangle and you can see from the rectangle does not fold on the diagonal which we saw practically. So we move on to the next figure. The flag of England, the flag of England. So when you look at the flag of England, it has got two lines of symmetry. Now we have got our application signs. We have the plus, the minus, the times, and the divide. We jump to test, do they have lines of symmetry? Yes, they do. If you look at the plus, the horizontal lines of the plus are a bit longer than the vertical lines. They are a bit longer than the vertical, than the vertical lines. So when we check at that, let's see. Uh -huh. There we go. Yes, it has lines and there are two lines of symmetry. The next diagram, yes, and it has also two lines. The next diagram, yes, and also it has two lines. And also the divide, yes, and also it has two lines of symmetry. How many lines of symmetry to these the regular polygons? How many lines of symmetry to these regular polygons? So when you look at these regular polygons, there you go. The first shape is a triangle. So when you ask the triangle, when you look at the triangle there, you can see there are three because it is equilateral. There are three lines because it is equi equilateral. When you look at the second one, it's a square. And if you look at the square, it also has uh, four lines, which we already saw. Now, the next one is a pentagon. The next one is a pentagon. So when you look at the pentagon, it has to be all sides equal, a regular shape. So if a pentagon is regular, then it will have five lines. So when you look at the next one, it is a hexagon. When you look at that one, it is hexagon. So a hexagon will have got six lines. Hexagon will make six lines. And okay. When you look at the next one. When you look at the next one, the next shape here, when you look at the next shape, it's like uh, one, two, three, four, it's the octagon. Octagon will have eight, but remember, all the eight must have, it must be a regular shape so that it can be foldable. Okay, so when it's foldable, Let's see the next. So that's a, a practical. You have to look at your name. 
you have to look at your name and check when your names are in capital letters when your names are in capital letters do they have each letter does it have a line of symmetry hey you can look to see if your name has symmetrical letters in it too so you can check each letter and find out if you have got uh, lines of symmetry on each on each part so that's practical for example i can test maybe a name called uh, Said. a name called Said. if you look at Said, Said has got four letters it has got s a i and b when s has capital letter it will not have a line of symmetry when s has a capital letter it will not have a line of of symmetry next letter for said is a yes if a is a capital letter it has one line of symmetry and next letter is i i practically i is not it doesn't have width if i does not have width then it has one line of symmetry but if you draw i which is a big part like a vertical rectangle then that i will have two lines of symmetry but when i is a bit when it's completely thin then that i will have only one line of symmetry d said d has one line of symmetry d has one line of symmetry so that's how we can test if our uh, letters have got a uh, line of symmetry so these are the letters these are the letters which are symmetrical they must have line of symmetry a has one line b has one line c has one line d one line e one line f does not have a line of symmetry g does not have a line of symmetry h has got two lines i as i told you when i is considered thin it has only one line of symmetry j no line k this k which has been drawn here does not have but our normal k our normal k has one line of symmetry students understand properly k k the way we draw k it has one line of symmetry the way they have drawn k here yes it does not have line of symmetry but the normal way we draw k it has a line of symmetry elo elo does not have a line m m has a line of symmetry n does not have or we say it has got many lines of symmetry p no line of symmetry q no line of symmetry r no line of symmetry s no line t it has one line of symmetry u no line of symmetry uh, sorry u has one line of symmetry v has one line of symmetry w has one line of symmetry x has two lines of symmetry y has one line of symmetry and z has no line of symmetry so that is a presentation which shows lines of symmetry that is a presentation which shows lines of symmetry now after looking at lines of symmetry we said we shall go and look at rotational symmetry after looking at lines of symmetry we shall go and look rotational symmetry now rotation symmetry is about rotating rotation symmetry is about rotating so in order for me to be able to rotate let's take an example of a square if i have a square there you see that that's my square if i have my square i can rotate my square see using a tracing paper i draw my square on top of my tracing paper like that i keep a starting point let's say i'll start from there north 
and I find out where is my original center. Original center is there. So what I do next is I pinch. I pinch at my center and I have to rotate 360 degrees. But we never, the original shape regains its look. I get one order of rotation. So I start rotating. I rotate my tracing paper. I rotate, I rotate, I rotate, I rotate. That's one order of rotation. I move to the next, I keep rotating, I rotate. That's the second order of rotation there. Then I keep moving my tracing paper. I get the third order of rotation. And finally, I go back to the original. That's my fourth order of rotation. So practically, if I have got a square, it has got, it has got four order of rotation. So four order of rotation. In order for you to rotate, you must have a center. So now this is what we practically mean. So if I have a shape, if I have a shape, rotation symmetry, then there's one important thing we need to know. One, we need to know about order of rotation. And I say order of rotation is how many times you regain your original look as you rotate 360 degrees. Not rotation starts from zero degrees until 360 degrees. So the number of times you regain your look, that becomes order of rotation. And we say the square has got four order of rotation. Now, if it was a rectangle, it will have two order of rotation. Okay, two. We must understand what is uh, a shape which has rotation symmetry. So a shape has rotational symmetry. A shape has rotation symmetry if it can gain its original, if it can gain its original look more than one time more than more than one one time so if a shape has got order two it means this shape has got rotation symmetry order three it means it has got rotation symmetry order four etc the number of orders if there are more than one then the shape has got rotation rotation symmetry however if if it has only one order, then this shape does not have rotation symmetry. If it has only one order, you know, take a look at this shape. When you look at this shape, you can never regain its original look until the starting point. Look, I'm drawing it on top of my tracing paper. See there? Then I keep my starting point. Then I choose a center. Ah, then I start rotating it. Now watch, I'm rotating. See P, P, P. At this angle, no. I keep on at this angle, no. At this angle, no. So everywhere I go, it's not, it's not regaining its look. No, no, no. It doesn't regain until final position when I go back. Until the 360 degrees. So this shape has one, one order. And if a shape has one order means no rotational symmetry. If a shape has only one order, it means no rotational symmetry. So for a shape to have got rotational symmetry, it must have two order or more. But when the order is only at the end of rotating, then we conclude this shape does not have rotation symmetry. Now, another point to take very serious. If a shape has rotation symmetry, look at the beginning. If a shape has rotation symmetry, it means if a shape has order from two and above, these shapes, they will have a very clear evidence of center. Hope we are clear. If a shape has got 
rotational symmetry means if it has more than two i mean two or more it has a clear evidence of center even if nobody shows you can see it yourself then this should be the center and if a shape does not have rotational symmetry if a shape does not have a rotational symmetry then you will not see a clear center i used this as my center when i was rotating but i can even use this i can even use this because anywhere i pinch i will still have one order of rotation at the end if i pinch there right if i pinch there then and i rotate 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 until until see see until the beginning that's when i will gain the rock even if i pinch this side down rotate rotate so anyway i pinch i will still get one order because this shape does not have a rotational symmetry see anyway i pinch i will still get one order so when the shape does not have rotational symmetry then anywhere you pinch you will still get one order even if i pinch at the corner here i'll still get one order so when a shape has got only one order of rotational symmetry then that shape does not have rotational symmetry. Point three, point number three, we do not have order zero. Yes, we don't have order zero. We don't have order zero because when we begin rotating from zero to 360, at least at the end, at the end, we call it one order because at the end you are gaining the original look because at the end you are gaining the original look so this is what we call rotation symmetry under 2d shape now let's look at let's look at this let's look at this there we go so when you look at this shape here, it is showing us rotation symmetry. There you go, rotation symmetry. So when we are talking about rotation symmetry, all two dimension shapes have some rotation because of order one. We talk about order. So when we are having order one means we can rotate. When we have order one means we can rotate. See, order one, order two, order three, order four. Okay, for shapes that have got order two rotation symmetry or higher in a single center of rotation can be located. So if we have two order or three or three or four, it means you can understand clearly your original center. And there it is. There it is. So it's easy to know the center if you have got rotation symmetry. Now, for those shapes which have got only one order of rotation symmetry, center can be found anywhere, as we say. See, the first one is showing you that you can have center anywhere. So that means it has only one order. And the other ones which have got two or three or four, they have a clear identified center. The order of rotation symmetry that an object is a number of times that it fits on itself during full rotation of 360. Order means when you keep fitting properly as you're rotating 360. That's what you call order rotation. So here is sample. So the first shape has got only one order. The second shape, we are starting from that point. Order one, then order two when you're rotating. The third shape, if you start from the point, that is order one, that is order two. And that is order three. Okay, when you look at the fourth one, when you look at the fourth one there, yes, so when you look at the fourth one there, you will also see one, two, three, and four. So, that's how we rotate that's how we rotate so we must understand how to rotate shapes number one we must have a center number two if the order is only one center can be anywhere 
But if order is two or three or four, we have got a specific center which you can see with your own eyes. And then you keep your tracing paper on top of the shape, and then you rotate. And the number of times you gain the original look as you are moving 360 degrees from, uh, from zero degree to 360, then those are orders of, of rotation. So these are more samples. These are more samples. These are more samples here. So when you look at this other shape here, there you go. It is a pentagon and it has got some shapes inside it. So all the shapes must gain their look. So we have kept a dot to show the starting point and then we keep rotating. Order one, then this one has got five order of rotation. When you look at this, when you look at this one, it is a circle. Remember, if it is only a circle, if it is only a circle and there is nothing inside it, it has infinity order of rotation. I repeat, if it is only a circle and there is nothing inside it, it has infinity order of rotation. But when you look to this circle specifically, it has got a star, a star inside it. A star is considered in the rotation. A star also must gain its look. The circle must gain its look and the star must gain its look while rotating. So one thing we have to co conclude, if a shape has got another pictures inside it, even those pictures inside must be considered while rotating or while folding. If a shape has got another shape inside it, all must be considered while rotating or even while folding. So this one has got six order because the star has got six points around it. Equilateral triangle. If you look at equilateral triangle, order one, order two, order three. So thought we can understand any shape if we try it out ourselves. So normally once you have a printout of a question, you can just look and know the order or if you cannot just look then you have to go ahead you get your tracing paper you draw on top of the shape and you start rotating the way i rotated at the beginning so when you keep rotating you will know exactly how many orders of rotation there will be in the in the given in the given shape so this has been a good lesson today. And um, when we meet again in our next lesson, we shall see, when you meet again our next lesson, then we shall see the 3D shapes. We shall see 3D, 3D, 3D shapes. So thank you for being good students today. Today we have looked at uh, line of symmetry and we have seen also rotation, rotation symmetry. Mr. Sanga will post for you these, these slides in your YouTube. Mr. Sanga, sorry, Mr. Sanga will post in your Edmodo so that you can do more practice of looking and understanding properly how you do it. So let's wait for Mr. Sanga in Edmodo and we shall see more. For now, this marks the end of our lesson today. Thank you for being good students.